My dear God's people, we are nearing the end of the liturgical cycle C. We are on the second last Sunday of this liturgical year. And also we are in the second last month of this year 2022 in which we remember fondly those who have passed from this life to eternity. And therefore the scripture readings of this Sunday remind us about the end times, about the finality of our life, about the end of the world. The first reading taken from the book of Malachi points to that day, meaning the eschatological times. There is a promise of healing and joy to the righteous ones. And on the other hand, there is fire and destruction waiting for the wicked ones at the end of their life. In the gospel passage, Jesus speaks about the end times. Jesus offers not a way of predicting the end of the world, but he offers spiritual resources to cope with adversity and hardships. First, he begins predicting the end or the destruction of the temple. So therefore, I would like to say something about this temple. A little bit of its history may not be in detail. Well, in the history of the Jewish people, the Israelites, the first temple was built in the 10th century BC by King Solomon. It was a beautiful and magnificent edifice in all its glory and splendor. But that temple was raised to the ground, was destroyed completely by the Babylonians in the year 586 BC. And the Israelites were taken into captivity to Babylon. Later, the Babylonians were defeated by the Persians. And in the year 538 BC, King Cyrus of Persia allowed the Israelites to go back to their land and rebuild their temple. The temple, the second temple now, was built under the leadership of Zerubbabel, the grandson of King Joachim. He was in the lineage of David. And for the restoration work, there were priests Ezra and Nehemiah, under whose leadership all the work of restoration took place. So this was the second temple built, but that never matched in splendor to the first temple built by King Solomon. It was built in hurry. The second temple was desecrated by the king Antiochus Epiphanes in the second century. But Matthes and his family revolted against the king and purified the altar, rededicated the temple. This same temple was again restored to its splendor and glory by King Herod the Great, who was then the vassal king of the Romans. This was the temple at the time of Jesus. And in the gospel passage, we see some were admiring the beauty of this temple. And Jesus predicts the destruction of this temple. The prediction of Jesus came true in the year 70 AD, when the Romans this time destroyed the temple. And it just lies that way till date. There is no more third temple as such. What I want to say, my dear people of God, everything, however beautiful it is, no matter how magnificent it is, will have its day, will be destroyed one day. Even the temple of our body, no matter how we try to decorate it and adorn it, everything will come to decay everything will be destroyed. So there is no need in wasting time on the externals. What is necessary is to enhance the beauty and quality of our life. Life fittingly lived that will help us to be in fellowship with God even beyond death. Secondly, my dear people of God, everything will surely suddenly come to an end. The world will come to an end. But it is insignificant to ask how and when the end will come. Because tomorrow if I die, that will be the end of the world for me. What is important is, and what Jesus is trying to teach us today is, when difficult times come, 
when we hear so much about wars and destruction and earthquakes happening jesus says do not worry trust in him and what we need is to bear witness to him in this difficult times because jesus even predicts that there will be severe persecution to his followers to his disciples before the end of the world and therefore many could perish in this persecution that would be the end of the world for them it could be you and me what is important is we need to be true disciples of jesus christ giving him a witness of his values of his kingdom values and if we do that jesus assures us that he will never forget us that he will grant us life he says do not worry not a hair of your head will fall to the ground yes he will take care of us and finally my dear people of god jesus warns us not to be led astray by some people who claim to know the future who try to predict the end of the world only god knows when the end of the world will come so being preoccupied with the end of the world is a perversion of the gospel what we need to be is to be ready at any time to face our death by living a good christian life no matter when it comes and how it comes when we are ready we have nothing to worry because jesus assures us that he will take care of our life and therefore my dear people of god do not panic trust in the lord may god bless each one of you